Let's celebrate the magic of short stories and poems. They are truly magical, aren't they? They make us feel happiness, heartbreak, horror, hope, hatred, and so much more. Namaste people. Welcome to Shweta's Basket, a weekly stories and poems podcast, and I'm your host Shweta Singh. The story that I have for you today is more like a monologue. It's the thought of the protagonist as she goes through this particular experience in life and how it affects her. But what is interesting is that so many of us would have experienced this or something very similar, especially in the beginning of our professional careers. This one is titled "To Buddy or Not to Buddy" and is written by Zainab M M. Now Zainab is a part-time writer and a full-time mother. When she gets the time, she reads, watches movies, listens to music, and of course writes. Her dream is to visit London one day and to hopefully win a Nobel prize. And why not? Fingers crossed and all the best to you Zainab. Her work has been published in numerous anthologies and online platforms like Visual Verse, The Humming Notes, Sharing Stories, The Hive, Beyond the Box, and Women's Web, to name a few. One of the stories that she wrote and narrated, "Let's Play a Game," has found a permanent home on Chrysanthemum Chronicles podcast. To read more of her works, check out her blog, thebohrawriter.blogspot.com. You can also find her on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. The links to all her social media handles along with her blog will be in the show notes. So here is Zainab's story to buddy or not to buddy. Loss is hard, especially when you lose a person. People always say things like you should move on or we can't control fate or mm, you should stay positive. but it's all nonsense generally when you get really attached to someone you're bound to feel a little hollow if you lose them more so when that person doesn't give a crap about whether you cared about them and might have wanted to give them a proper farewell i lost a friend today her name is durga like the goddess no no she didn't die or anything she just moved on to another job we worked together at the same bank which i hated by the way and she was one of the first person i befriended it wasn't best friend forever at first sight either but we were like two asteroids slowly inching towards each other awaiting the inevitable crash oh she was really pretty moon-faced and a perfect figure and had a kind and benevolent personality to match. She loved dressing up too and had a habit of wearing a new hairdo every day. I was never quite sure what her age was though. She had one of those faces, you know, that made it impossible to guess the age. She looked quite young when her face was animated, but when her face was relaxed, like in the mornings when we came into work, You could distinctly see a few wrinkles around her mouth and eyes. <laughs> I even tried asking her directly once, pretending I had been asking everyone else their age to know who was the youngest in the whole bank. And she told me she was 27. I later found out that she was well into her 30s, which was the beginning of quite a lot of revelations. Our friendship was never really deep either. It was professional but really I had thought it was a little more than that. We gossiped and I mean we gossiped a lot. To me it felt like I had found another similar soul. But that was no way near the truth. We chatted with each other a lot so much so that the rest of the staff used to think we might be quite close. But what no one knew was that we never talked about our personal lives. 
now that i think of it she made a conscious effort to not go near any topic that would come close to revealing something i never got to know anything about her and i learned from other sources that she had been married and probably even had kids but was now separated as the year went on she was promoted to a higher position in administration while i went to a different department we got too busy in our work and only met in the corridors but the crash was yet to come as we inched towards the end of the year there became a shortage of staff in another branch and she was shifted unceremoniously well that's how it felt like to me cuz i never got the memo it's as if one day she was there and the next day poof she was gone she did not even have the courtesy to at least text me once and has not until now ah uh, i was under the illusion that i was her friend it offended me a lot i moved around at work for days tried to be angry at clients but then control myself for fear of losing my job but finally i returned to normal because i realized huh, i did not actually miss her much <laughs> even though we were close to each other perhaps it was pseudo closeness and i realized that maybe we were never friends at all we were like just two people who had been forced to interact with each other due to circumstances like moon forces the sea to ebb and flow every day we two were forced to come close and then separate maybe it was fate maybe it was financial desperation but in the end whatever it was we were unable to control it it reminded me so much of my grandfather's death I was really small when he died so I didn't know him too well but it still affected me a lot because I was repeatedly told that I was his favorite and that he really cared about me some even said that I looked exactly like him but I don't have a single memory of him anymore and that makes me wonder and so it was with durga maybe that's what we are as humans our lives are just like stories and the more people we meet the more our story changes some people stay on for a long time and become epics while others leave early and remain short stories <laughs> but they are important nevertheless because without them our story would be incomplete Isn't that right dear listeners Sometimes we feel in that moment in our lives that that person is so important to us and if we lose them all will be lost But after the initial shock we get over the loss with minimal damage to ourselves and then we wonder why did we think that all will be lost if that person was not in our life And you know through this story Zainab has shown that part of our lives and emotions so beautifully and that's what I love about this. This applies not just to a professional relationship but actually to any relationship. So people remember that our book of life will have epics and short stories and we need to be grateful for both. Okay, moving on to our one question section. In the last episode I asked you what has the poet Sonal Singh compared the days to in her poem what are days like The right answer is mischievous children and the first person to DM me was Vasudha ji Thank you so much Vasudha ji for listening to the episode and sending in your answer You know how it is one thing leads to another When I started the podcast it was on podcast platforms only like Anchor Spotify Google Apple it was actually Sonal my sister and uh, then Mithru my friend who encouraged me to put it on YouTube I was resistant to the idea in the beginning because it meant more learning more work but finally I gave in and now I am super glad that I did that because a lot of my listeners including Vasudha ji listen to the episodes on youtube imagine 
if I didn't have a YouTube channel. So never let an opportunity go by, dear friends. Always explore. And now moving on to the one question for this episode. What is the name of our protagonist's friend? You have three ways in which you can send in your answers. You can DM me on Facebook or Instagram or email your answers to shweta at the richwetasbasket.com Now, do you think poems can be anything other than soulful and with deep meaning? Well, come back next Friday for I have two everyday life poems full of humor titled Jim Kasi Appa and Bin Bulai Mehman by the very talented Nisha Tandon for you. I bet you laughs and chuckles and moments when you will relate to them personally. So see you next Friday. And guys, that brings me to the end of this episode. Do subscribe to my website www.chwetasbasket.com so that you're always up to date with what's new in the basket. And stories and poems are not the only things. You will find book, movie and restaurant reviews in the basket too. And if you enjoyed this episode, then follow or like the podcast, share our episode on your timeline and tag us and recommend us to your friends. Help us reach more people. Shweta's Basket is available on 18 different platforms like Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts, Ghana, GeoSavan and others. We're also on YouTube. For the complete list, check out the show notes. And if you want to get in touch with me, I am on Facebook and Instagram. And my handle is Shweta's Basket. And guys, in this day and age, it's a good idea to have a website. So if you're thinking of having one, then listen on. Because having a good-looking and professional website is just a click away. In the meantime, this is your host, Shweta Singh, signing off. Till we meet again on the air next Friday. Bye for now. Do you want to have a website of your own? Are you a writer, photographer, actor, makeup artist, hairstylist, or even a tutor, singer, painter, journalist, consultant? Or do you have your own cafe, restaurant, resort, holiday home, shop, small business, hospital, or even a blog, WordPress, or Blogspot account that you want to migrate to a good-looking website? Well, look no further. The Geeks will help you. And you will find them in the Geeks room at Artoons Inn. Just click on the link in the episode description. Yes, it's that simple to have a website. My website is hosted and managed by them. And want to know what I love about them? They are professional, customer pleasers, straight talkers and very confidently priced. So what are you waiting for? Your website is just a click away.